When we, when Beat for Life took off in 2004, and we had this amazing article that generated $90,000 in revenue, we had all been doing it part-time, on the side, in addition to our regular jobs. We were all volunteers, we had no paid staff, we didn't have an office, we didn't have a budget. And when we sold $90,000 in six weeks, we sat up really straight and said, this is something that could be much bigger than what we have ever dreamed, and we gotta get serious. And it was at that point that we hired our first staff, there was like two of us, and we set about trying to put some structure and you know <laughs> standards to the business. And it's really grown in that in that way since then. Um, and it's really evolved in a, a, a strategic but also organic way. You know, we've really tried to say, what do we have the skills to do? What are we best positioned to do? And what's the world offering to us? And trying to pursue those things. Um, in the last, it, for the first five years, we pretty much doubled revenue every year. It was just a sprint to try and keep up with demand for beads. Um, so that was a time when we were just sort of responding to all the opportunities that we had. We had some amazing media and um, some great opportunities that were just thrown our way. And so it was, it was pretty reactive in some ways, just trying to keep up. Um, then the economic crisis hit and we sort of plateaued, which was nice to have some breathing room. And in the last year or two, our revenues have come down a little bit. And um, although we don't love that, it's given us some new opportunities to really think about how are we strategic and where do we want this to go, rather than where is it going just because we're trying to keep up. And so we're at a really very exciting time, terrifying time, of trying to envision what the next 10 years look like. Um, and uh, so that's um, really fascinating in Uganda because we want to take what we've learned over nine years of helping women who are living on less than two dollars a day to start businesses that are sustainable, that truly address extreme poverty, and how do we share that curriculum with many, many other groups that are doing this work because we know that there's demand out there. Um, and so feeling like we finally have the breathing room, that we have our model, we know what we're doing, how do we try and share that? And here in, in North America, the distribution side, it's really saying, how are we more targeted about who we want to partner with? How do we raise our visibility with more people? You know, where are the places that we need to be talking to people and sharing our products, but also sharing our story? That we're a nonprofit that's 90% self-funded through revenue. Um, we're really a business in some ways, and yet all of the profit, profit gets plowed back into our work in Uganda. So we think we have some things to share and um, are, are right now in the process of envisioning over the next three years, how do we, um, how do we make that change? Um, some of our staffing needs to change in order for us to be better positioned to be more proactive in going out to the partners and the different markets that we want to pursue um, and building the capacity for us to get to really a whole new level. So it's really very exciting. I think in three years we're going to look nothing like what we look like today, um, but it also keeps me awake at night wondering how it's all going to play out and how I'm going to manage to get us from here to there.